So now that we have discussed the objectives and the benefits which can be derived from post-clearance audit, we now continue discussing the different types of audit. So under the WCO guidelines for post-clearance audit, there are three um, types of audit. First is the comprehensive or systems-based audit. Second is the focused or issue-based audit. And the third is the post-importation transaction-based audit. So for the first type, which is the comprehensive or systems-based audit, the WCO guidelines describes it as follows. So this type of audit, the comprehensive or systems-based audit, looks at the entire business control environment and the impact this might have on customs compliance. Analytical procedures are used heavily and substantive testing is reduced where control environment and corporate governance, uh, governance systems are good. This kind of audit takes place at the premises of the auditee, field audit. The amount of information to be examined by auditors is potentially large, although it depends on frequency audit. A complete picture of the business can be captured by the field audit, including examination of its business systems, trading methods, partners or directors, and internal control. Mostly relevant for administrations with a trader-focused targeting approach. So when we talk about comprehensive or systems-based audit, we talk about an audit which is comprehensive in nature or which may encompass not only the aspect of importation but also the whole of the operations of the importer as well. So we are not only dealing with one aspect of the business which is the importation side but we may also deal with other um, aspects of the business which is um, uh, its governance, how it does its governance. We may look at the partners, we may look at the directors, we may look at how it does its business, um, what transactions does it have with its partners abroad or in other countries, and so many other aspects which may be looked into. So as the name implies, comprehensive or systems-based unit is based on the organization or on the system uh, as a whole. So it's comprehensive in nature. Regarding the second type of business, focused or issue-based audit, the WCO guidelines for post-clearance audit describes it as follows. So this type of audit concentrates on one or a few areas of customs, for example, valuation, country of origin, etc. Tests on related systems and controls and substantive tests may also be carried out. Criteria will be necessary to decide which type of audit is appropriate in each case based on the most effective use of resources and the desired objectives. Mostly relevant for administrations with an issue-focused targeting approach. So when we talk about this second type of audit, which is the focused or issue-based audit, as, com as compared with the first type, which is comprehensive, this one is more, as the name implies, more, more focused. It um, targets specific issues. Uh, for instance, as, as mentioned earlier, you may look into the specific issue of valuation. You may look into specific issue of the country of origin. You may look into the issue of classification. So in that sense, it is different from the first type, which is comprehensive in nature. This one is more focused and deals with a more specific um, area in which um, the audit will focus on. The third type of uh, audit, as described in the WCO guidelines for post-clearance audit, is the post-importation transaction-based audit. So it's described as follows. As mentioned in the introduction, administrations that have newly implemented post-importation controls may consider introducing checks on individual transactions. This can work in two ways. First, referrals from the port or border post when an officer has doubts concerning a particular declaration at the time of clearance. If it is deemed that significant duty may be at stake, an inquiry is then referred to the appropriate customs office to further examine the declaration, normally in consultation with importer or exporter. The goods in question may be released or other action may be taken as appropriate. Second, a targeting team scrutinizes individual customs declarations after clearance 
and selects those where doubts arise regarding their accuracy. These declarations are then verified as above, normally in consultation with importer or exporter, and action is taken as appropriate. In each case, it is highly recommended that risk-based selection criteria are used to determine which customs declarations will be verified. At a later stage, the administration can consider developing a post-import systems-based audit approaching along uh, with the transaction-based audit. So this third type of audit, the transaction-based audit, is also different from the first two in the sense that unlike the comprehensive audit, this one is also more, uh, more specific in nature because it does not look into the business of the importer as a whole, but rather it looks into specific transactions of the business. Um, it also differs from the second um, type, which is issue-based, uh, because in the second type, the focus is on the issue, whether it be valuation, classification, computation, or any other issue, whereas in this third type, the focus is on a transaction basis. What transaction are you looking into? There is a specific transaction covered, and you examine that transaction thoroughly. So the focus um, here is the transaction rather than the issue um, in the second type of audit. 